Hello, we are going to talk about Hess's Law. Hess's Law is a powerful tool that we use to find delta H for an equation. Uh, we'll use Hess's Law if we have a really expensive experiment, um, <clears throat> we have a dangerous experiment. There are some experiments that we're just not able to do, uh, but we can use uh, equations that do have delta H, the thermal chemical equations, manipulate them, add them together, and we'll get that target equation. Now let's go ahead and look at the definition. Here it is. If a reaction is a sum of two more, two more reactions, so I add these reactions together to get my target reaction, the delta H for that overall reaction is the sum of those reactions, delta H. Um, I want to remind you this is a state function. This works because delta H is a state function. And you'll recall, it doesn't matter the path that we take, it's just that the beginning and the end points are the same. So this allows us to do another method, another path to find delta H. Okay, I'm going to do two examples for you today. For me, this is a matching game. You'll have to be given the target equation. So here's your target equation. And your textbook might not call it a target equation, it's just a question. Here's uh, a chemical reaction and they want to know delta H. That's going to be your target equation. And then you'll be given a set of um, chemical reactions that are thermochemical, that they have the delta H attached. Um, just as a side note, you could have a teacher give you four equations and you only have to pick the two that you need or three that you need to get the target equation. Um, I've seen AP do that before, where um, they gave students options for thermal chemical equations and they didn't have to use all of them. And of course that threw students off because they were trying to use every equation that they were given to add and subtract things, um, cancel out to make it equal, equal to target. So be aware of that. You could also be given these with um, symbols. So instead of having a copper two chloride and copper with a copper one chloride, um, it could be X, Y, and Z, but it's going to be the same principle, same, same principle. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do this. I began by looking at what I have on the reactants and the products um, on each of those sides and the coefficients. And then I make the equations, thermochemical equations match. Um, so I have one mole of a copper two chloride. So I look, where's copper two chloride? Ah, there it is, and it's one mole. So the moles are right, but the positioning is wrong. This is on the react or product side, and one on the reactant side. That means I need to flip that reaction. And you'll recall, when we flip a reaction, you change the sign on delta H. So let's do that. I am going to flip this reaction, and we will get copper two chloride yields copper plus chlorine, and the delta H for this becomes a positive 206. And these are all in kilojoules per mole. I just didn't take the time to write that down. Um, now, conservation of energy. When this reaction happens, it releases 206 kilojoules per mole. But if I reverse it, that means I've got to put 206 kilojoules into it to make that go in the reverse direction. So I flip this, I'm going to go ahead and cross this out. So it's going to take paper. It's okay, give yourself space. It's easier than erasing and going back. Just take another line, write it down, cross out what you've changed. Okay, so now I'm looking at these two. And remember the goal is to add these together, just like you were adding um, algebra equations together. When I add these together, we've got to equal this equation. So I found the copper uh, two chloride, perfect. Let's look at the copper chloride. I tend to go to the big compounds first and then I'll do the small compounds later at the end. Um, so my copper one chloride, um, and I see, there it is. Oh, and this is perfect. Um, two moles, two moles, product side, product side. So I'm not going to change that at all. So you're looking at this and saying, well, Mrs. Lobb, what about the copper? Oh, okay. A lot of times the last little thing that you're working on is just going to come out in the wash. If you get all of the large compounds taken care of, the small compounds, they work themselves out. Let me show you the copper. So I've got two coppers on the reactant side and one copper on the product side. Think about this. If I had um, y plus 2x equals um, 1x plus c, I could subtract 1x from both sides, and you get y plus 1x. 
equals z. It's the same, same principle. These, I can just subtract. So this one copper is going to subtract from that two and leave one copper right there. Now we're going to add everything together. Okay, and so again, that copper just canceled out one of those coppers on the reactant side. Whatever's on the opposite side of the yield sign, you can cancel, you can cancel. So I add up everything on the reactants, everything on the products. Let's see what we get. We're going to have um, Cu plus, let's see, oh, look at my chlorine. One chlorine, one chlorine on the opposite side of the um, yield sign, those cancel out. Um, so that I have my one copper and that's going to leave plus CuCl2 yields. And then the only thing left over here is the two CuCl. Now we've got to check it. This has to match this. So let's look. I've got my one copper, my one copper, two chloride, and it's fine. You can switch those. They don't have to be written one in front of the other necessarily. Oh, sorry, got two plus signs there. Um, and then my product side, two copper, one chlorides. Awesome. Now the whole point of this was to find delta H. And this is the beautiful part. All you have to do is add those two together. Um, so negative 136 plus 208, delta H is going to be um, 70. Yep, 70, nice. And my unit, kilojoules per mole. So the thermal chemical equation for this reaction to happen, we have to put 70 kilojoules into it. Okay, so there is your first example. Let's do another example. I'm going to erase this to give us just a little bit of room. Okay, so here's my target equation. <clears throat> Let's start with that carbon. I'm trying to find two carbons on the reactant site. So looking, this reaction is the only one that has carbon on, uh, in the equation at all. So notice reactant site, good, it's on the right side, but it only has one mole and we need two. So I'm going to take this whole thing and I'm going to multiply that by two. So let's write it down. We're going to get two carbon plus O2, oh, excuse me, two O2 times two CO2, and then the delta H, um, what it, whatever you do to the reaction, you also have to do to the delta H. So I multiplied everything here by two, check that ratio. Now I have to multiply this by two. And again, conservation of energy. One mole of that reaction, as written, releases 393.5 kilojoules. Well, if you have a, a double, you have twice the amount, you're going to produce twice the energy. So let's multiply this. Let's see here. That would be, if it's 400, this would be 800 minus 13. So it would be 787 kilojoules, and that's negative, okay? So there we have it. So we took care of the carbon. Now I'm going to look at, um, I think that's acetylene, the C2H2. Um, oh, here it is. Okay, there's a, um, my C2H2. Two issues with it. It's on the reactant side, but I want it on the product side. And there are two moles of this, and I only want uh, one mole. So I'm going to flip this and divide by two. So this whole thing, we are going to flip and I'm going to divide by two. Okay, so let's do it. We are going to get two CO2 plus H2O yields C2H2 plus, oh, five halves. Okay, don't let that make you nervous. It's okay, we're just doing some manipulations. It's all right, five halves O2. So this, when I flip it, it becomes a positive Delta H will be positive, and then I have to divide 286 by 2, and we're going to get 143. So if we reverse the reaction, flip it, have half the moles, we are going to absorb 143, uh, 143 kilojoules. Okay, now I have one more reaction right here, and I'm looking for this H2. There's the H2, and 
I don't see H2 anywhere else in here. That is perfect. Reactant side, reactant side, one mole, one mole. So I'm going to leave that one as is. We will have H2 plus one half O2 yields H2O. And our delta H for this is the negative 285.8 kilojoules. Okay, now we're going to add up. So I'm going to get out a different color marker so that we can cancel everything possible. And the hope is when we add this all together, we get that target equation. Okay, so you're looking for anything that's the same, but on opposite sides. I can see two CO2, so that will cancel. I can see one H2O, that will cancel. The only place I have carbon is there, only place I have acetylene is there, only place I have hydrogen is here. But I have oxygen all over the place. Check this out. Five halves oxygen on the product side. And over here I have two and a half. <laughs> two and a half. Let's look at that. Two and a half. That's a, um, a mixed fraction, an improper fraction. Two times two is four plus one is... Oh, five halves. We have five halves oxygen on the product side and five halves oxygen, even though it's split apart, that's fine. Five halves oxygen on the reactant side. So that five halves cancels out both of those because together those are five halves. Ooh. Okay, now let's add up what's left over. Everything on the reactants, everything on the products. I have 2C plus H2 yields, here we go, C2H2. Okay, delta H. We did all of that to get the delta H. So let's see what we've got here. All we have to do is add up those three numbers. So we're going to have negative 787 plus 143 plus our negative 285.8. And that tells us, wow, this is pretty good. Um, for this reaction, delta H is negative 929.8 kilojoules per mole. We found delta H. Okay, good work. Remember, you're matching what you have from the target to the equations given. You can multiply, divide, flip them. When you add them together, match that target equation. Those are the same. And then the important part, add those delta H's. Also remember, whatever you do to the equation, you've got to adjust the delta H to match. If you flip it, change the sign. If you multiply or divide, multiply or divide. Good work, have a great day.